Welcome to Digital Asset News, take your top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to take a look back at the history and take a look at one of my worst predictions so far. Year isn't over, so who knows? We're going to take my prediction of XRP going to $95.20 and why it could be just a little bit off. I'm going to show you how I got there, the rationale behind my decision-making process, and also some ancillary information that we just need to go over. Also, America's biggest exchange announces support for XRP Flare Airdrop, and surprise, surprise, it's Coinbase. And we're getting all that, but first I want to say thank you to iTrust Capital for sponsoring this video. I don't do many spots to date. I have had two. One is CryptoTrader.tax. I believe everybody has to do their taxes, so they might as well use some software to make it easy on themselves. And I trust capital because I believe everybody should have, or at least look into, a IRA. Because if you live in the States and you believe that Joe Biden is going to get into office, you have to watch out because Biden's new tax plan is going to raise tax revenue by $3 trillion over the next decade. And the reason they're going to do that, or how they're going to do that, is they're going to tax the living tar out of long-term capital gains. And these could be as high as almost 40%. So if you're into cryptocurrency digital assets, which I think you are, and you have a traditional IRA somewhere else or an old employer plan like a 401k, 403b, military TSB or 457, then you can move them tax penalty free to a crypto IRA at iTrust. Also, if you want to start a brand spanking new IRA, just go over to iTrust Capital. There's a link in the description. Use the link in the description below. The first 30 days are free. Go to the website, schedule a call and get to talking to a live actual person. All right, a rare promoted video on digital asset news. So what is going on right now? So it is Sunday, December 6th. It's about 11 a.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time and nothing. Nothing's really going on. Um, I'm not even going to go over the, the whole thing because Bitcoin's at 19.1. You all know the prices, so it's no big deal. Um, XRP, 60 cents, watch out. Uh, to this tether, nobody cares, uh, Litecoin, and so on and so forth. So really, I just want to make uh, mention of one important thing. This is when all the money's made. This is when all the money's made, when it is boring and people don't want to look at it. Like, this is just dumb. It's never going to go up. Maybe I was wrong and you get the cold hands and you're like, oh, my hands are getting weak. This is when all the money's made because this is when you dollar cost average in and you put money into it when nobody else is doing. Also, the second time to make a lot of money is when everything goes down. So just remember that. Uh, sure, it's boring. Sure, there's really nothing really too much going on. But uh, again, this is when all the money's made. All right, let's jump into today's big stories. So we don't know where we're going until we know where we've been. And uh, I'll tell you where I've been, making crazy predictions uh, last year. So two of my eh, two of my biggest videos, I would say, is uh, Ripple makes 2020 prediction at 56,000 views, which is okay. But uh, this one over here, the Bitcoin XRP price in 2020, had almost, well, had 263,000 views on December 21st. So December 20th, 56, and then this one. So not too bad, but really I'm ashamed sometimes of these videos because, I mean, the price prediction is just outrageously ridiculous. So again, it all depends on where you were. And I really want you, as we're watching this, just kind of think to yourself, you know, what are my decision biases? Where could I have probably looked a little bit deeper? What was my flubs? Where were my errors? Because, uh, you know, we have to take a look at the errors so we can actually, you know, make improvements going forward. So uh, the first minute or so, uh, just me talking about, you know, how we got here. And this was actually a report brought to us by Ripple, Ripple Insights. And of course, uh, they have a little agenda when they put these things out. But, you know, uh, when I was reading it, it, made a lot of sense. So this is what we got. XRP price as it relates to the halving, and as we see it compared to the price of Bitcoin, how Bitcoin has gone up uh, from each halving to their all-time high. And all right, so first of all, great music. Um, yeah, I used to do a lot of music in the beginning. I think, I actually, I started this channel around December, like end of November, early December. So yeah, this makes sense of what I was doing back then. But let's just rewind this for a second. This is what I'm going to go over. So what I did here is I used fractals. And I took a look at the first, second, third halving for Bitcoin. And I just saw how much percentage gains it was each of those halvings or halvings, whatever you want to call it. And I just kind of extrapolated the data from there and said, well, you know, if it was six cents, you know, when uh, during the first halving for XRP, then the second halving, uh, this is what happened. It was $3.40. So that was a gain of about 28x so or 56x. And then, so the next one, if we cut it by half or so, we'll get to about $95.20. So 
I will say this. Now, the time frame is still off because I said, well, it could be in 2022, but I have to I have to really re review this and go, I don't think it's going to happen. So I see where I was going, but it is kind of funny to, you know, just to kind of take a look back and go, wow, what the heck? We're going to look forward a little bit. Let's see what I was actually thinking uh, the very next day. So I thought this is all interesting because we're going to go over some MSNBC, some Squawk Box uh, interviews, and we're going to see how they're pretty much doing the exact same thing as I did about a year ago, how the predictions are pretty much on point, uh, but there's just a little bit of a variance. But when I took a look at this video, I'm like, oh my God, look at my portfolio back then. This is exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted just to keep it small and just have a little bit and not blow it up like I did in 2017. Well, unfortunately, it repeats itself, and now my portfolio looks like this. Holy smokes, I went off the deep end. I know some some people talk about, well, you gotta get in these low cap gems to make the most amount of money when they're just you know fractions of a penny and so, so on and so forth. You can make a lot of money that way. But for me, I kind of hedge my bets. I'm like, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna go down to like the, the 500 on the coin market cap or coin gecko to take a look at these uh, prices and hope they kind of come in. To me, I feel like, well, Bitcoin and Ethereum is going to be the lion's share because I think those are the ones that are going to be the best. And then off of that, I've put my money into what I would consider lower cap gems, but not that much. But it does comprise the other 30% or so. And uh, I will just tell you this. Out of all these different projects right now, the ones that I dollar cost average every single day still is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Voyager. Those are the only ones. All the rest of them, I have my positions, I'm pretty good right there, and that is pretty much it. The reasoning behind it for me is pretty simple. I think uh, Bitcoin's on the public consciousness. I think it's going to do very well, so I'm going to keep adding. I think it could go up to you know at least 100,000 2021. Make another prediction right here. Let's see if it comes true. And it might even go up to 250, 300,000. I don't know. So I will still continue to add in until it hits around 35,000. Then I will not dollar cost average because I think it's going to go past that hit the all-time high of whatever that could be, 100, 300,000, I don't know, and then come all the way back down to around 30, 35,000. So after 30,000, I will not dollar cost average in. I'll let the market retrace. Ethereum, I think it's gonna be very big, gonna be huge. And if it's not Ethereum, I think it's gonna be Cardano. So it's one of those two. However, I've always said that I think there's room in the space for two. You can't dominate the global environment with a new technology with just one technology and have it just go all the way i mean you could i mean actually you could look at amazon that's really a new technology if you think about it google did the same thing but uh i still think there's a, there, there's room for two in there and then voyager i believe in voyager i believe what they're doing i think it's gonna be a huge project because of not just their app but their acquisitions that they're doing they just purchased a exchange in i think it was france and the european union so they're going to be branching out over there also their token i think i see it just like uh the binance token so that's why i put in money every single day to those four projects so you know let's go back so i want to start off with msnbc and they're just talking about tim draker Tr tim draper and how crazy his prediction is and now when we look about it we're like that's not crazy that's, that could actually totally happen producers we talked about this earlier today i said i don't know if we should talk about it because i felt like it was so Bold. It's almost irresponsible, but Draper's a, he's a well-known guy. Yep. He's not going to say anything he doesn't believe, so we went ahead and did this. I mean, is there anything that you're seeing that could make this bizarro prediction happen? So, it, it, yeah. Isn't that amazing? First of all, they're like, this is so far outside the, the realm of possibility, we shouldn't even cover it because it's, it's actually dangerous to our viewers. And now we look at it, we're like... Yeah, I mean, you know, 150,000 150, is pretty a pretty conservative number these days, uh, depending on, you know, which big institution has put out uh, their numbers. I mean, Fidelity and TD Ameritrade and all these big, I mean, Paul Tudor Jones and the Druckenmillers. And when they start talking about these numbers, it's like, oh, OK, well, that's what it's going to be. And it's not a big thing. And it was just a year ago. So it's amazing how things accelerate so fast. You know what? It sounds bizarre, but it wouldn't be out of the realm of what Bitcoin has done in the past. And so that's why I wanted to bring up this chart. And just to be clear, this is not my call, but I just want to take a look at what Bitcoin does. So the chart we have here is a log chart of Bitcoin since 2013. And as you know, Carter Worth will say, the lines draw themselves, but you have this channel going all the way back to 2013, and it's traded nicely in that. Now look at this. If you go all the way out here to the top of this channel here, that's about 200,000, 250,000. So so it totally makes sense, right? I mean, we can we looked at it back then and we're like, that's kind of crazy. But now in today, December 
6, 2020, we're like, yeah, that sounds uh, pretty reasonable. That's within striking distance, we would say. So so there's that piece. And then I, it's just one thing about Tim Draper. He's been incredibly consistent the whole time, and he's hit his numbers. So he was the one that called, actually, he called a 20,000 Bitcoin, and it, came, it went up to 20,000. So 10 to 20, hey, if you're if you're under it, not too bad. And now we're going to get it into Tom Lee. <laughs> this is always funny about Tom Lee, because when he was on there this year, they treated him like some second-class citizen. They're like, all right, not coming here and talk about your craziness. But in 2017, they treat him like a god because he was like, yeah, Bitcoin's going to go to this and it's going to go up. They're like, oh, really? Fantastic. And of course, now this is in, remember, this is 2019 when everything was like crashing. Bitcoin was around $7,000. It had been like moving sideways and nothing, doing really anything. And they're like, all right, Tom, come in here and, you know, spew your ridiculousness. Let's hear it. But again, he's another guy who's been incredibly consistent. So I got to tip my hat to him. I mean, I, I'd still say if I looked at 2020, the easiest way to make money in crypto is going to be a position in Bitcoin. I mean, as you guys mentioned, it's actually done quite well this year. So I think Tom here is a is, is a Bitcoin maximalist. Um, the thing is with Bitcoin, I think it's the safest bet. I do personally, because I mean, everybody knows about it. Institutions are getting in. I mean, old school legacy places like Fidelity now has Fidelity Digital Assets, and they're going to uh, push a lot of people to Bitcoin and, and Ethereum. So I think that's the safest bet. However, if you think about it, for Bitcoin to go up to its all time high, it's around 7,000 right now, uh, somewhere around there. It's December 21st, 2019. So for it to go up to its all time high, it has to tr roughly triple, right? 793.21, my math is correct. And the all time high was around 20,000. Okay, triple. But if you look at other ass other digital assets like XRP, um, right now it's at 20 cents. If it tripled, that'd be 60 cents. It's all time high was $3.40. So what is it, 8X, 10X? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not real good at math and I'm still not. But that was the thinking back then. I was like, you know what? I mean, there's more upside. I mean, I still think about, you know, XRP. There's still there's still major upside because just to get back to its all-time high, I mean, look, that is that is another 10x. Well, not now, but when it was 25 cents, 50, 30 cents or something like that. And of course, yeah, I could have made it. But I mean, I was like, wow, I don't think Bitcoin's going to get back to its its uh, previous all-time high. And here we are. We're almost, I mean, we just hit it not too long ago. Actually, we exceeded it not it's like about a week ago. Um, I did say, though, back then, I thought that the safest bet was Bitcoin. That was a year ago. And I still say the exact same thing. Actually, I was on, I was on Jerry Hall's show. And at the very end, I asked everybody who was on the panel, I said, if you have $10,000, and you have to bet your family's future on it, what coin, what would you put, which cryptocurrency would you put that into? And it could be anything. Bit the Avenue and Crypto Siege without hesitation said XRP. Jerry at first said Bitcoin, but then we put some of the parameters in. He said, yeah, okay, I'll go XRP. You know what? I'm still gonna go Bitcoin because it's the most conservative. No, it won't. It could not potentially make the gains that XRP could. But we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, XRP could be deemed a security. Now, before you throw your fist at the screen and start screaming, you never know. It's not like the wheels of justice are perfect. Let's just be honest. And they could they could do that. And that could sink a lot of things. It could still take off. It would just take a heck of a lot longer. And there could be other issues that are out there. So I think that XRP could be a great play for you uh, if it if it all works out. But for me, I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm going to go a little bit safer and then go with that. Now, am I going to sell my XRP? No. Like I've said before, I will go down with the ship. I will go down as long as it takes because guess what? I've got nothing but time. And if it doesn't make it, it's okay. I've already lost a whopping like 80% now, 75% somewhere of the value of uh, that position. So another 20% is not going to kill me. And uh, I just don't care. So now that I look back on these videos and I see just the positions that a lot of the people have, I respect the decision even more just to hold strong with this is what, what I see it's going. This is what I believe it to be. They're not all over the place. You know, some people might, might say that they're charlatans just for their initial prediction, but it's what they truly believe it's going to be. And again, they're not like just throw out these like super crazy numbers. Maybe back then it was a crazy number, but at least that they've been consistent the whole total time. And I can respect that. And yeah, you know, let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think XRP could hit $95 and 20 cents or that $589 magical number that people keep throwing around? Or do you think it's gonna go back to being uh, pegged to the quarter? Let me know in the comment section. Let's move on.
Next up, this will be quick. Uh, Coinbase is going to uh, list the Flare airdrop for XRP. This is uh, kind of a surprise to me because I didn't think they were going to do anything with retail. I've I've been saying for a while, for about a week now or so, a couple of weeks, I think um, Coinbase has just moved on to the institutional side and it's kind of left the retail at the at the wayside but uh they actually bowed down and said yep you know what we're gonna bend the knee and we're gonna say yes we will definitely support this flare airdrop and it really comes down to the power of the community because if the community didn't demand it so much or talk about it so much or give them so much trash about it they wouldn't have done it because they'd be like who cares we don't need to do this for for anybody but now that people step up and they do it hey now here we are. So this is actually from Stetis and he puts out a nice little uh, graphical representation of all the different um, wallets and exchanges that are actually going to uh, participate in this airdrop. And you got everything from Uphold, BitHum, uh, OKX. The new ones that I saw was Kraken at first put out, a, they put out a, a release that said, we're not gonna support this. And then they, they totally did a 180 and said, oh, well, we're gonna support it. So Kraken's gonna do it. Uh, my guys, what I trust capital are even going to do it. And then Poloniex is also going to, but there's just one thing, and this is, this comes down to all the different exchanges. And that is this, this is the official uh, blog post for Coinbase. Where they say, yes, we're going to support it. It's on December 12th, 2020 at uh, 0, 100 hours. Uh, so I recommend that you stop transferring all your stuff around a couple of days before and just let it sit there. Don't be like, oh, I'm going to do the last minute. That's that's dumb. Just put it in there, set it and forget it and don't move it. So they do say this, and this is for all exchanges. Our decision to support any asset requires significant technical and compliance review and may be subject to regulatory approval in some jurisdictions. Which is amazing because when Uniswap got listed, it was like, as soon as it got, uh, Uniswap said, we're going to give out some tokens. Coinbase is like, we'll do that. And then no problems, but money, whatever. We therefore cannot guarantee when or if Spark will be available for distribution in any specific jurisdiction at this time. So this goes with all the exchanges. If they don't want to list it, they, they don't, they're not going to list it. I don't know how that's going to work as far as like getting it off the exchange. Maybe Nano Ledger will support it. Or maybe they'll have their own. Uh, wallet. I have no idea. But just so you know, the exchanges you pick could not end up listing it, meaning you could not sell it, meaning that it could just be stuck there. And maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Also, the snapshot is happening on December 12th. Doesn't mean you're going to instantly get those flare tokens. It's going to be until Q1 2021. So just be aware of that. And lastly, there's two wallets that I don't see here. I don't see celsius anywhere here but celsius is going to support it you can do a search for uh, celsius xrp airdrop and there'll be a video there from a guy named nuke the chief technical officer also alex mashinsky came out on, on uh, youtube and did the same thing on a, one of his amas and said yes we are going to support it also voyager is also going to support that i had messaged uh, steve last week I said, hey, man, I know you're getting ready for your big Giants game, which they're going to lose. I said, uh, are you guys going to support the airdrop? He said, yeah, uh, we said it on Twitter, but not in a formal release. But yes, we are. Go Giants. Da, da, da. So Voyager will also be supporting. And you don't have to do anything. You just leave it right there, and that's it. So as far as I can tell, it seems to me like most, most if not all, well, most, you can't say all, most of the big exchanges and big wallets are going to support this. And, that, and that's on top of Binance and Binance US as well. And that is uh, really it for today. Don't forget to check out iTrust Capital. The link is in the description below. Just go over there, schedule a call, talk to them as long as you want to. It's great talking to a real person. And then get these things done before these crazy taxes get enacted. Or even if there's no crazy taxes that come up, uh, you're still going to have to pay taxes. So try to minimize those as best as possible. All right, so thanks for sticking with me to the whole thing. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure. I'll let uh, YouTube do their magic. And that is it for today. So thanks again. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.